All right, consider again this Vermont study. So now what are we going to do? We've got to create a 95% confidence interval, interpret the uh, interval in this context, and explain it, what this 95 confidence means. Okay. So let's do it. So we're going to not use phantoms. We're going to use panic. So our parameters are the same thing. So P sub D is the proportion. of students whose parents disapprove of smoking. P sub L is the proportion of students whose parents are lenient towards smoke. Okay. Now what we got to do is we have to check the assumptions and conditions. So I'm not going to go back and redo all that because we've already done it, but again, we would had to do the random condition, the 10% condition, the independent samples condition, and the success failure condition. Well, we already did all that, okay? So we're not going to do that again, okay? So I'm just going to put for assumptions and conditions, okay, 10%, random, success failure, and then you would do independent samples. Okay, so we got to name everything. Okay, so what we have is we have a two proportion confidence interval, and again, we got the same statistics. Okay, so N sub D is 281, P hat sub D is 54 over 281 or 0.192, and then uh, Q hats of D is going to be 0 0.808. Okay, and then N sub L is 41. P hats of L is 0.268. And then Q hats of L is 0.732. Okay. Alright, so now got to calculate the interval okay so I'm gonna do this I always like to do the the larger one first so I'm gonna put the lenient parents first so I'm gonna put 0.268 minus 0.192 okay plus or minus 95 percent confidence interval has a z-score of 1.96 times the square root of now we're not going to use p pooled here Okay, because we're not using standard deviation, we're using standard error. So we're going to do P hat sub L times Q hat sub L over N sub L plus P hat sub D, Q hat sub D over N sub D. Okay, now you could have done this the other way. You could have put the 0 0.192 first and check. Uh, you'd be comparing uh, parents that disapprove to parents that are lenient. Okay, I did it the other way because I use it, like to use the larger number first. You could have put these opposite. That's fine. Again, when you add, it doesn't matter what order you add in. You just can't mix these percentages with each other. So you can't put this 268 where this 0 0.192 is. This fraction, you could do this fraction first plus this fraction second, that would be fine, okay? Now, we gotta go and get the interval. So, we're gonna go to stat, test, and we gotta, uh, let's try that again. Okay, and let's go to two prop uh, zient. There it is, okay, two prop zient. And 
I'm going to just switch these, okay, because I want the lenient parents first, and I want the, I want the, um, yeah, 54 out of 281, uh, I want the disapproving parent second, okay, and that's our interval. So it's ne about negative 0.07 to like 0.22. So the interval comes out to like negative 0.07 to 0.22. And the conclusion is we are 95% confident that the proportion of students who smoke that have lenient parents is from 7% less than to 22% more than the proportion of students who smoke that have disapproving parents. Okay? Now if you did this interval the other way, you got the negative 0.22 and you got the 0.07 the other way. So your interval would read, we are 95% confident that the proportion of students who smoke that have disapproving parents is from 22% less than to 7% more than the proportion of students who smoke that have lenient parents. It would just be the opposite way. Your interval would be exactly the same. It would just be switched around. So the last question is, well, what does a 95% confidence interval mean? And what it means is we expect 95% of random samples of this size to produce intervals that contain the true difference between the proportions. So that's what a 95% confidence interval means. This is the interpretation, and that would be the meaning of it.